At the end of that time, the jury will be released. Uh, they will go to their quarters. They will have approximately a half an hour uh, to uh, let us know their verdict. At the same time, uh, this trial is being broadcast worldwide per Ustream, and people are allowed to vote uh, and call in. I believe that should make uh, the ground rules uh, very clear. Uh, needless to say, uh, we have opened this up, as you can see, to an audience. Um, as in a normal trial, trial uh, there will be no allowance for or no toleration uh, for outburst in the audience, uh, any type of threats, acts of violence. Uh, the audience must sit there uh, basically in complete silence and in support. That is the same way. The same respect will be giving, given to the prosecuting attorney and to the defense attorney uh, as long as they are speaking, whether you are in agreement with their words or not, is in the eyes of this court uh, of little interest. Uh, you are to give that person, uh, the defense attorney or the prosecuting attorney, your absolute attention and respect. Um, I believe as in accordance with uh, a normal American court, uh, we will now begin, and we will begin with the prosecuting attorney. Doctrine, the same ways how they practice the Muslim, how they practice the Quran, in the same ways 
Uh, they've been practicing it uh, from the very beginning until now. There is nothing, there is no changing happening in uh, the Quran or in the teachings or in the ways how they put it into practice. Okay. Uh, Mufid Quran Barah wa Quran in Arda wa ala shakida min ahem ta'ali al Quran wa asasiyat al Quran ala shan in awa yantashir wa ala shan al Islam yantashir la buddha min al qadl wa al jihad. So, uh, from you know how the Quran as it, it started, how it spread all over the world, the main tool and the main way how they're spreading the Quran is by jihad and by forcing Quran by sword to be spread. Uh, and as we learn that as ex-Muslims that only Muslims have the right to rule and to have the whole world for them. Dwellers or the fire. 
So in the, in the first verse it says that I'm fight and fight in the way of Allah and know that Allah in all is all hearer, okay. all knower. Okay, I believe it's a call. I'm call, I'm fight. The, this is what the, yeah, this okay. was there the is a huge difference between fight and kill. And kill. So all the verses here just kill, 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 kill. It's in Arabic and the perfect translation is kill. Okay, uh, ayah uh, 151, سنلقوا في قلوب الذين كفروا الرعبة بما أشركوا بالله. And uh, in verse 151 say that gonna, God gonna, going to throw fear and terror in the hearts of unbelievers. Okay, ayah 84, فقاتل في سبيل الله لا تكلف uh, لا تكلف إلا نفسك وحرد المؤمنين على القتال. And verse 84 saying that urge the believers to fight and kill. Yes. Uh, so verse 84 says that and your enemy and others besides whom you may not know but whom Allah does know. Okay, again, ayah 50, 65. Uh, so in also in Anfal 65 say, O Prophet Muhammad, urge the believer to fight. Surah uh, Tawbah, I just take the verses from each surah that is very important. سورة التوبة الآية 14 قاتلوهم يعذبهم الله بأيديكم ويخذهم وينصركم عليهم ويشفي صدور قوم مؤمنين يعني في تلسس في متعة وانت بتقتل من ليس مسلم Okay and also in uh, in توبة 14 saying that because it's uh, let me just make sure fight against, against them so that uh, you should fear him if you are believers fight against them so that Allah will punish them by your hands and disgrace them and give you victory over them and heal the priest of the of a believer people. It's believing people mean that the believing people had anger and uh, and for them to heal their anger and to heal their heart they have to kill and see blood to heal their hearts. Okay. What do you believe don't use fight the word fight okay. please kill. Okay, it's a kill. Tawbah uh, also, the ayah that is related to the Jews and related to the Messiahs. The people who are not in the day or the day or the day, they are not in the day or the day, they are not in the day or the day. They are not in the day or the day. Okay, uh, the Tawbah in Tawbah 21 says that Allah will punish them by their hands and give Believe not in Allah, nor in the last day, nor forbid that which, which has been forbidden by Allah and His Messenger. And those who acknowledge not the religions of truth among the people of the scripture, Jewish and Christian, until they pay the jizya with willing submission and feel themselves subdued. اوكي في ايات كتير جدا بتتكلم كلها عن القتل عن القتل عن القتل وكيفيه الاستمتاع بالقتل وكيفيه الطريقه اللي بتقتل فيها سواء بالذبح سواء باعداد القوه بالارهاب سواء كان ارهاب فكري ام ارهاب بالسيف ولكن انا عايز انادي ماي فيرست ويتنس اوكي جاست تو توك اباوت ذيس بوينت and there's many, many, many verses talking about the ways how the, uh, you know, uh, torture and kill the unbelievers in many ways. And, uh, like, so maybe by cutting their necks, uh, cutting their parts, and how God is really having pleasure seeing people like tortured in his eyes. But I'm, I'm going to ask my witnesses to start to come and speak about that. Okay, uh, Mr. Rahman, uh, please.
دستور احمد في البدايه بدي اسالك ايه شعورك وانت قاعد النهارده كشاهد وكمسلم سابق وبتشهد النهارده باداره القران بالارهاب والتحريض على الارهاب والقتال Mr. Ahmed, uh, I want to ask you today as a witness, what's your feeling as an ex-Muslim sitting here uh, condemning the Quran and as a witness, an eyewitness, an expert, the witness to? Uh, as a former Muslim, I feel liberated by presenting the facts to the people, not uh, meaning to insult everybody or anybody, just need to present the truth with love and need to present the actual sayings of the Quran as something that every Muslim, as he taught us before, to be not ashamed of and actually do it with pride. So now we need to present the truth for everybody to know. Okay, as a Muslim, what is the difference between the Muslim and the Muslim? How do you deal with it? How do you deal with it? As an ex-Muslim, how he was looking for the non-Muslim, how he was treating them? The view of the Quran. Antum uh, al you are the upper supreme. You are the people of Islam. Uh, you are the chosen nation. So I am above everybody who is not Muslim. So as a Muslim, you are above everybody. Above everybody who is not a Muslim. Why? Because the Quran said that you are the best nation being exposed to mankind. And it says also that Allah made you up high and supreme for all beings and the religion of Islam given to Muhammad from Allah is uh, uh, overpowering and have abrogated all other religions. Therefore, you are supreme to others. According to the Quran, the Quran said, You've been the most uh, uh, blessed nation being exposed to people or introduced to people. Okay, أخ أحمد لو أنت كنت لسه مسلم وتعرضت إن واحد جاي فتح لك بيته وعدت بيته أكلت وشربت وخدت كل الواجب الضيافة أي إنسان مسيحي يهودي وتبع واتفاجئت بعد كده إنك أنت جالك الفكر الإسلامي أو الفكر الإسلامي تغلب عليك لأن الطبع بيغلب التطبع And you killed him. You killed his family. You took everything. So, uh, Mr. Ahmed, I want to ask you that question. If uh, can we get some more volume here, Dave, than these people here, than whatever y'all are doing here. Uh, imagine yourself visiting uh, some of your friends. Maybe they're Christian. Maybe they're Jewish. Whatever. Not believing in Allah. And then after you visited them and they offer you food, they honored you, give you water. They welcomed you to spend a night or two nights at their house, and suddenly you found yourself that you are like under the submission to the Quran and you have the right to kill them because they're not believers. And you already did that, like you killed them because they're not believers. Uh, will you be happy as a Muslim? Well, uh, it, uh, it pains my heart to say that uh, it is my duty to do so. Uh, also, it is my mistake to be friending uh, a Jewish or a Christian or a non-Muslim person for the doctrine of animosity and friendship uh, in the Quran, according to the chapter 5, verse 51. Uh, uh, and all, uh, all the, the people of God or the liberal of God do not partake uh, Jews and Christians, uh, uh, friends, uh, uh, and whoever takes them so will be from them. And, uh, and this verse by itself, according to my knowledge and the interpretation of Sheikh Al-Qurtubi Al and Sheikh Ibn Kathir, and also in uh, interpretation and uh, the fatwa of Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah said, that this by itself, it is, if it is ignored, it will take me out of Islam and it will, I will be an apostate by itself and should be killed myself. Therefore, I would be happy to kill them and I would be glorifying Allah for doing that. Okay, only the as a Muslim, Sabah, in the name of Islam. In 10 years, there are 37 Ghazwa and 37 Sarai. Can you tell me about the 
ازاي ما بيجاء برسالة سلام محبة زي ما بيقولوا وده القرآن ما بيقولش كده وفي عشر سنوات فقط على الأقل يغزو هذه الأدوات ويغتصب ويقتل بني قريزة وبني قينقاع وكل هذه القبائل العربية هل أنت كإنسان تقدر تنصح الناس إن هم يمشوا ورا هذا النبي الإرهابي القاتل أم إنك أنت بتنصح الناس النهاردة وتقول لهم لا دي تعليم خاطئة بتجر بالإنسان So, um, an, an ex-Muslim, I want to ask you that question. Talk to me about the Prophet Muhammad in his uh, beginning of the, you know, the, the, uh, the inspiration of the Quran, how he was a prophet of mercy, and at the same time, in 10 years, he invaded uh, 37, like he made like 70, uh, 37 ghazwa, or uh, a, a war. And he killed tons of people and thousands of people. How are you gonna advise the non-believers, non-Muslims, to follow a prophet that he started his mission with killing and raping and taking women as uh, you know uh, position, position or uh, properties as uh, slaves? Uh, uh, actually, I wouldn't uh, recommend anybody to follow this doctrine uh, from the Quran and from the the teaching of the Prophet of Islam because it's uh, uh, merely depending on a couple of verses from the Quran, uh, especially the verse that states that uh, uh, today I have finished my grace and bestowed it upon you and I have accepted Islam as the final religion for you. Also said that uh, whoever accept any other religion other than Islam will not be accepted from him and should be a, a, a kafir and should be killed because it is a lot of verses in the Quran to uh, promote killing the kafir uh, uh, wherever they find them, uh, wherever you find them and not only kill them, also you have to mutilate the body especially to mutilate the hands that can carry the sword and carry war against you. Uh, Mr. Ahmad, why you are on from Islam? Because I uh, found that the Quran is false and at that time when I thought about it uh, that uh, the verse told me that if you will find anything different in it or contradiction in the Quran the, it will be, uh, then it will be not from Allah uh, uh, and when I found contradictions in the Quran, I decided, according to the Quran, that it is not from Allah, and I became an atheist for a period of about seven months. And during this time, I read a little bit in the Bible, which was, at that time, funny for me. And uh, later on, I accepted the Lord, and I found that He's giving me life. Okay, Mr. Ahmed, you just said that you find the Quran uh, is false. Yes. Can you explain to us how uh, the Quran uh, says that uh, it came in uh, with peace. However, we find them in Surah number uh, 39, which is Surah Az-Zumur, verse number 35. It says that uh, do not yield and call for peace while you have the upper hand. And, and also uh, he said, uh, kill them and uh, strike their neck and shoulder and uh, uh, tie them and after that take uh, uh, take concubines and uh, prisoners of war. So what you are saying, that Islam has no peace at all? Islam doesn't have any peace but between Muslims because there is a Dar al-Islam, the house of Islam, and the house of war. Any other uh, place is a house of war. When they say to Ifshu Salam Bainakum or uh, spread peace among yourself, he's meaning to do that among Muslims only. Okay, uh, just translate it, please. The Quran said, okay, uh, It said that don't you ever call, don't yield or call for peace while you have the upper hand. Yes. Yeah. Okay, the Quran said, when Ganahu is still in fact, Ahlaha, who in Hena Adat, Shart, there is an 
That's a very, 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 very uh, big condition. And it said that if they will ask for bees, if if it's had a condition, if they will ask for bees, it's okay to go with them. Okay, uh, Mr. Ahmed, yeah, the Quran, all in the Quran, ayat the Quran, from the beginning to the end, كان المدني أم المكي. المدني المكي كان هناك في سكون لأن كان في ضعف. Yes. ولما نيجي نتكلم على الضعف بتاع الأمة في البداية قعد 13 سنة ضعيف مستكين ولما اشتد أذره بعد كده في المدينة 10 سنوات أدى عشرات بل مئات الألاف. Okay, uh, we can see two pictures of Islam. In the beginning of the Quran, it was talking about peace because uh, Muslims was weak at that time. That's why you can see that picture of peace. But after the Muslims start to get power and strength and more numbers start to reveal the truth, true face of the Islam and the Quran that start to kill people and invade them and, you know, uh, rape women and take them as mulk uh, al or... Uh, okay, uh, actually it was a uh, deceiving beast. Yes. It was, it wasn't a real beast. Uh, yes, Because yes, of his weakness. Yes, sir. Uh, absolutely, and when everybody, uh, anybody gets a copy of the Quran, no matter what the translation is, whether it's correct or not, you will find that the Quran is uh, parted into two parts. The, uh, the Mecca period, or the Mecca era, which has a lot of peaceful and kind of uh, calm uh, way to introduce Islam but to people. There is no but there is no peace. There is no peace. No, no, I said kind of peaceful. I'm not saying that there is it's war just peace. Uh, let's say kind of being meek and weak. Uh, however, after the migration of the Prophet of Islam to uh, Yathrib, that called later on Medina, uh, we found a stronger uh, uh, version of the Quran, which is the second part of the Quran, and they call it the uh, verses of Medina, which is actually called for strength and, f and fighting uh, uh, all against uh, other Muslims, also to empty the peninsula of Arabia from any other religion but Islam. Uh, as well, furthermore, uh, uh, we found that when Muhammad acquired a couple of swords and few men, started right away the jihad. And as the Mr. Uh, Mr. Prosecutor said earlier, uh, uh, 37 battles he got involved in, in th 37 <coughs> battles, in a total of 82 battles, he actually commandeered during his life in Medina. Send his people. Yes, sir. Okay, about 37 attended by that, himself. That, that he attended and participated in by himself. In 10 years. In 10 years, yes, sir. Okay, do you have an idea how many people can, Muhammad has been killed in this period of 10 years? Uh, a lot of people, let's, uh, let's look at, uh, at the interpretation of the Quran regarding the fighting verses uh, of what's called Ghazawad, which is the battles. Uh, how many peoples of Quraysh got killed in the Battle of Badr? That's and good. before that, how many uh, uh, trade caravan been killed, uh, the people been killed and the women been taken as, as slaves, yes. uh, sold as white slavery uh, to be concubines to other people? Uh, children to be uh, for, um, so, uh, I'm sorry to say, uh, fornication and pedophilia and abuse and child molestation. Uh, 